Hello, hello, everyone. All my friends in the chat. Let's see, I see Donna is here and Lois and Lindsay. Kelsey is here and Natalie and Krista and Lori, of course. Want to welcome everyone in and welcome everyone that will catch the replay later. Let's see here. Hello, Marie. How are you? Everyone, everyone, everyone. Okay, so a few little housekeeping things while everyone is popping in. Hello, Shell Bell. Um, next week, we are starting sneak peeks of springtime. Yay! I saw some of you in the chat that were talking about dreary weather and winter weather. So maybe some springtime card making will help you warm up. Hello, Paula and Barbados. Let's see here. Hello, Denise in Missouri and Gail. Hello, Lori. Hello. Cool. Yes, springtime. So exciting. There's a lot of super cute things coming out in the spring release. Hello, Carol in Bakersfield. Um, okay. I think we are good to go. Um, other than that, so we do have um, our free card class that's coming up this weekend in our challenge group. And if uh, most of you are probably part of the challenge group, but if not, this is our card that we're going to be creating. And it is found on Facebook and our challenge group is called Honeybee Stamps Buzzworthy Challenges. And so if you go and look that up, the card class is free to use. You can use any type of product that you want. I'm going to be creating this card in the photo with the lovely layer strawberries. And I am going to create that card from start to finish. Let me see here if I can get all of my things back off here and see everyone. And then um, with that coming up, I have offered a prep night, prep evening. And so I'm going to go live in the challenge group and I'm going to prep all of the die cuts and everything to prepare or help people prepare for the class on Saturday. And so if you want to come and join us in there as I just prep and walk everybody through um, how you can prepare for the class. I know that makes it easy for some people. And then that way on Saturday, when it's time to craft, everybody has everything ready to go and we can get busy on some fun ink blending and card making. Hello, Erica and Susan and Olivia in Ontario, California. I have family in your area. Let's see here. Lori is in uh, British Columbia. Julia, hello. All right, everybody is saying yay to spring. Absolutely. Okay, so I'm going to go down to my desk view here. And tonight we're going to do a card. It's going to be springy. And I am going to use some new product. This is the stencils from the Friendship Frame uh, little collection. So there was a stamp. There are the stencils and there are also the dies. So I'm going to use the stencils and the dies. I'm going to create a little kind of a floral wreath, a springy floral wreath. And then I'm going to use the Lovely Layers Winter Birds. I'm going to create a kind of a little blue bird. <laughs> My little puppy. She hears Emily coming in the front door and she's, she's all um, distressed about that. So I'm going to create a little bluebird out of our little chickadee here. So I've got my layering guides ready to go. I have my stencils ready to go. And so let's get started here. Let's see here. Darn, I thought we were doing uh, prep tonight. No, it's tomorrow night. Tomorrow night, Wednesday in, and it will be over in the um, Facebook group there. So that's what we're doing. You can come get them. I told I told everybody in the chat that, that um, she was all distressed because she heard you come in the door. Okay. All right. So now that Miss Lily is all taken care of, you know our 
puppies between kids and pets. I just do. I don't know sometimes. Okay. So I'm going to start out with stencil number one. All of these are etched and labeled. So it's super easy. And this says green leaves and I'm going to slip it right into, I've got my paper in the corner here and I'm going to slip my stencil right in the corner. And then I am going to first take just my uh, dirty blending brush. This is, um, this is mowed lawn. And when I stencil, and those of you that have been here and um, watched me in the past, I like to go in the direction, um, kind of from like, this is, you can kind of make out this little leaf right here. And so I'm going to start at the base of the leaf and flick up because that's going to concentrate the majority of the pigment or the darker areas of pigment towards the base of the leaf where you would want those shadows. So I just kind of cheat it. And that way, you know, I'm not trying to go in later. And um, I mean, you can always add fancy details and I do sometimes, but this is kind of the way to achieve um, some really nice ink blending without having to um, switch up your colors and do multiple colors and go back over your stencils and things like that. So I like to do this a lot of the times just because I think it makes it easy. And then I can kind of see, it's going to be hard for you guys to see on the screen um, right now, but I can see by looking at it where I want, like you'll see I'm going to town on these little areas right there because I want those darker. Those are just kind of little, little buds and little blossoms here and there. And I'm going to make sure that I've got all my areas and anywhere that I want it to be darkened up, I can put some more pressure on my brush and go at it that way. Okay, so let's lift this up. And it's not going to look like much right now because all we have are our leaf layers. But you can see here what I'm talking about is where you're going to get those darker areas and then it's going to fade out into the lighter portion. And that's what I like. I like to do, I'm a lazy crafter. I want to do the minimal amount of work um, the first time around. So it looks pretty but I'm not spending a ton of time getting, you know, specific looks or anything. Okay, so next thing I'm going to do is, uh, this is large flowers and it has a little number one right there. And so again, I'm gonna take, I'm gonna start out with my dirty brush and then I may add ink later. This is saltwater taffy. And so I can kind of pull it out if, um, it is that really kind of corally pinky color and I'm going to do the exact same thing. So I'm going to start and I'm going to start dragging it. So the base of those petals are darker than the tips. So drag, drag, drag. And I just kind of watch here and then some of them I'm going to really darken up and I always take my finger and kind of feel around. Let's see here. That is an open spot. I'm going to go back and hit that with a darker colors. And then we've got some pink there in a large flower. And that's an open spot. I'm going to go back to that. And I can take my brush here and hit the petals. Just like that. And then I'm going to go bring it down in the corner to this flower and petals. Just like that. And then let's see what we got. I'm really getting down over the top of it. Okay, now I'm going to switch brushes because some of these are little open areas that are that go into the center of the flowers. And it's okay that that goes over that in pink because I'm gonna pull in abandoned coral, which is a really nice um, hot pinky kind of orangey red that's gonna be really pretty with that pink anyway. And so I'm gonna pull that in. I'm gonna pull it into the center of this 
big flower right down there and I'm just gonna make sure it gets all into those nooks and crannies and then I'm gonna really look around to make sure I'm getting all the little parts and pieces and then I can set that aside and then let's pull it up and see what we have here okay so our little wreath our little floral frame is starting to take shape here okay let's see here stencils sure help with ink blending actually make me like uh, like I know what I'm doing yes me too exactly okay this is large flowers number two I'm just gonna make sure that this is all down in the corner and I'm gonna set this down and I'm gonna use the same saltwater taffy and I use so much off of my dirty brush that I am gonna dip a little bit I always like to start with my dirty brush first because that's going to give you that really nice light haze of color instead of being really heavy handed from the get go. And so I'm going to make sure and you'll see me as I do this run my fingers over it. And that's just just because sometimes, you know, in the light, it's hard to um, make sure all the little pieces and I'm going to may have to go back for that one. Okay, so we're going to do this big pink flower. I'm going to start in the center and then I'm going to radiate out from the center. That way inside nearest the center, the petals are going to be darker and then they're going to get lighter as they go out towards the tip. So they're going to match all of these just like that. Okay, this one is going up this direction and this direction pull it that way and then we've got one right there and right there another th fun thing that's so cool about stencils is you know if you don't like the way that something looks then you know put that stencil back down and go over it again okay there is a center right here now i don't want that that center to be pink i want that center the start of it to be yellow so i'm going to start bringing in some other little colors here now let's see here i'm going to make sure i don't have any other yellow spots on this one and I'm going to pull that up and you can see how we're looking here see where we have the dark of the abandoned coral we have abandoned coral here and then we've got a yellow center we've got some darker little petals tucked in there so it's all kind of starting to come together now I am going to go back I want to make sure that I didn't miss any little pieces yet no I have not okay I wanted to make sure I hadn't missed anything Okay, so next one is small flowers number two. And this is where that center comes in. Okay, so I'm going to make sure everything's in the corner. So this mat, this is the waffle flower stencil mat. And this is almost just like when you use your misty stamping tool and um, you um Make sure everything is, is in the corner. I'm trying to think and talk at the same time. Okay, so on this layer, some of these small little flowers, some of them are going to be um, blue. They're going to be speckled egg. So we're bringing in some springy blue here. And this brush is brand new. So I'm going to get it really nice and inked up here. You can see how that looks like a robin's egg perfect for a springy time blue and then I am going to lightly kind of radiate those out from the center pull here and then I'm just going to keep working my way down just like that have some darker some lighter like that and then I'm gonna do the same up in here just like that 
drag some and then twist some and then these maybe I want those just a little bit darker than some of the other ones so I'm going to put more pressure on the brush okay so this center here I'm going to do in blue so we're going to pull that blue in right there and then I'm just going to look and give it a once over make sure that I have everything done you can see how we have darker color here. We've got a little darker here. We've got it really light up in here, a little darker. So we've got a variation in color there. I'm liking how that's looking. Okay, so let's take the next stencil. So this is Small Flowers number one. And I can see I need some yellow right in there. I think it's, no, it's not even that one. It is some of the other ones. Okay, I'm going to do yellow for that center. And it's not that one either. I don't want to miss any of them. Okay, I think we're back to the speckled egg. And let's do a little lighter there and lighter there because the other petals were darker. Let's do lighter on these because the ones beside them were a little bit darker. There we go. And then there. That one I'm going to pull out a little bit darker. Just like that. I picked up just a little more ink. And then. Lighter. And then I'm going to pull this one just like that and pull that way and pull that direction. Okay, let me make sure we've got everything. All right, I'm going to pick this up. Okay, and that's really starting to look pretty. See where we have like those look like little pansies. We've got dark spots and we've got lighter spots. We've got some darker mixed in with the lighter, dark and light. I like all that. We're doing really good. Okay, now we can get after some of the centers of the flowers. Okay, now I can do my yellow centers on the little pansies. And then let's see here. Let's do yellow right there and there's those little open little stamens or whatever those are yellow and this yellow is squeezed lemonade I'm gonna have to re-dip here brush here and I'm just looking for all the spots that I want yellow yellow And some of these, especially over the top of the blue, I'm going to do a little bit darker. It will turn the blue underneath a little bit of a green, but it's all going to blend in um, to the background since we have a bunch of green and blues going on anyway. Okay. Hit all those little centers. Okay, let me make sure I got everything. Okay, now I'm going to take my brush again for the abandoned coral. And these, there's some little open areas on these little pink flowers right there. There's one, you know, right there, right there, right there. Okay, now let me see if we've got everything. And I can kind of pick this up. Okay, looking really good. This is the little spot that I couldn't find earlier. So this is where I can go back through. And there it is. And because I've butted it up in there, it's easy just to lay it right down and then add that little spot of pink where I needed it. 
Okay. So see how we're looking? We've got this kind of like watercolory, pretty design. So pretty and springy. Okay. So before I go on, I'm going to show one of these because I always get questions about how, what's the easiest way to clean your stencils. And so I'm going to show you how I do it. And it's really, it's really easy. So you want two um, cloths and you'll see mine are well loved. Do you see how yucky that is? Now these are just stained. They're not uh, dirty. So let's take this one that's got all that green all over it. So what I do is lay one down and then I take another damp cloth and then you're just going to go over the top like this. Now what that does is it's saving you work is what it's doing by having the cloth underneath because the cloth underneath is going to catch all the ink that goes through the holes and instead of you having to go back and then forth and then back and forth, I know we've all done that to get all the ink off each side, doing it on another cloth is gonna save you all those having, from having to go back and forth. And then I also get lots of questions about when you have really delicate areas like this right here that goes inside those petals. I do a lot like when I'm ink blending and I kind of just go in the direction of those little spiky things that are sticking out. And I'm just really careful to kind of dab and not scrub. You don't want to really scrub it and then just kind of go over it just like that. And then see, we've got a really nice uh, stencil there. Um, okay. So I hope that that helps just a couple of little tips and I'll save that. I won't make y'all sit through all that. All right. All right. So before I get too far with my mat, Let's put together our bird. So we have our lovely layers, little chickadee here, and I've got all of his little pieces cut. And instead of him being like brown and gray and black, I have cut all of his little pieces out of white and blues. And I wanna make sure that I've got all of his little pieces here. Okay, so this is his little base layer. And then we're gonna put a little blue like a little baby blue tail on him. And then I've got a gray chest like this, making sure we've got all of our little pieces. And then his little head is going to be a darker blue. So you can kind of see where we're going here. Okay. So totally fine. He's totally cute. Cut out of just colored cardstock, right? So we've, I did blue cardstock and gray and darker blue, but we're going to zhuzh this up just a little bit. We're going to, we got to make him uh, kind of stand out and I'm going to grab some post-it notes and I'm going to do some ink blending first on his little leggies. And so let me find my brush. And this is Hickory Smoke ink. So Hickory Smoke. And I think I want to take, and I'll show you why I use my dirty brush. So here is a dirty brush. I was going to use my little tiny one, but I always start with my dirty ones first and go over it because even though they might seem like they're dry, they're going to have ink left in the bristles and see that might be enough just like that because I want to keep him really light for kind of my springtime look and so I think that that's going to be cute so I'm going to peel that back and see his little legs if I want to go a little bit darker I could go a little bit darker or even add a little black soot maybe just to the tips so it kind of darkens up just around his little feet and his nails a little bit and then that's not going to get too dark see there for our little bird I don't want to make him too terribly dark and then I can also 
get kind of adventurous here and I'm going to start here at his head and I'm going to ink blend just a tad over his body just so when we put all these layers together he's not just stark white right here and it's not just like a glaring huge difference between the colors of our bird. Okay, mm, maybe a little, a tad more. So I'm gonna pull that down a little bit more. Just like that. I'm gonna, I wanna keep him pretty light. So that's giving him a gray cast, that's good. Okay. So now I'm gonna start putting this little guy together. Let's see here. Um, let's see here. Oh, good. Lisa's here and Ricky is here. Hello, all my friends. Um, okay. All right. I'm going to start putting this little guy together. And then we're going to see if we need to add any other details. And so I'm going to do that. So we've got his base layer here. And then just like with all of our other little lovely layers sets, it's almost like putting together a puzzle. So I'm gonna kind of fiddle him around until all the little lumps and bumps and everything on his little head line up. And so he's all lined up nicely. And then we're gonna do his light blue area with his little head and all the way down his little tail. Let's see here. And then I'm going to do the same thing. So I'm going to kind of place him and then carefully, if I can get it, pick it up and then make sure all those little lumps and bumps and his little tail and everything. Sorry, I don't want to be off the screen there are all lined up. Okay, do you see how he's looking now? Look how dang cute he is. And see his little legs are darker, and then we go into gray and a lighter gray. Okay, he's pretty darn cute. And then, oops, and then we have his little head. And then I saw somebody in the chat talking about their birds. How many of you have the winter birds? Okay, and now he's got a darker blue head. Okay, now look, we could call it good. And he does have um, a little spot for his eye and his beak. I'm going to draw those on with a little pin here in a second. But the, the wings and everything have all these super cute little embossed details. So I think we need to add some details on him. So I'm going to start out with a white gel pen and I'm first going to go around the embossed areas in his little neck and just hit a few of the little areas on his feathers and the embossed areas in the die cuts, they really make it, um, like you're cheating, where you're just gonna follow the lines. You're just gonna follow those little embossed areas. And you can see already, just by adding some little bits here and there, where he's starting to get a little character to him. See where he's got his little feathers? And I mean, you could come down his little chest. We could go give him a couple little light feathers on the top of his head. And that's looking pretty dang cute. I want to keep him pretty light. Okay, so for his eye and for his beak, um, on all of my birdies, I always use a black gel pen. And so I'm going to start this off on my post-it note. And I'm going to trace the area that's in the die cut. And this black gel pen, it not only looks glossy, but it also leaves like a tiny bit of a raised, it almost is 
uh, gives it a little bit of a domed look. This is called glaze um, gel pens, and this is the black. And so I could even go in and maybe add just some teeny tiny like little nails to his little feet. And then look how full a character he is already. So I can kind of pick him up. I do want to let that gel pen dry, but you see how nice and glossy and how dang cute he is. And then we're going to cut this out, but he's going to be so sweet in our little um, floral wreath that we have going on here. All right, so I'm going to set this little guy aside. All right. And then I have my wreath here ready to go. Now I want to die cut this. So there's an inside die and then there is an outside die. And let me find, this is going to be the trick. If you guys only knew how messy my craft room is right now, I hope I can find, there it is. Um... I, it is so bad, the, the craft room. So um, thank goodness you guys only see like this area right here because I'm going through all of my craft room and um, kind of storing away retired honeybee stamp stuff um, and stuff like that. And whew, um, I've worked for honeybee for six years. And man, you can tell by the look of my honeybee stuff. I, um, even when I first started on the honeybee design team, I started out by doing the honeybee blog and doing videos um, sometimes. Um, that was my very first thing I started out with. Um, I'm going to take this to the dye machine. Anywho, so um, when I um, started on the design team, I went back and I bought all the honeybee things, all the past stuff, because it was only, it was still a baby company at that time. I think they had only been open for a year or a year and a half at that point. And so I went back and just bought all the things. So I have um, all of the like OG honeybee stuff from eight years ago from when it started. So I've got a ton of honeybee stuff. All right. So I'm going to take both of these dies carefully off of our pretty floral background and you can see now we've got this really pretty floral frame that we're going to use on our card. All right so let's start building this puppy. Let's see Kelly will you ever sell your used items of stamps and dies? Um, always rejoicing. Some no I, I, um, I don't s sell them. Um, what I've done a lot of times, like if somebody is looking for something, a lot of times um, I'll help them out, you know, especially if it's retired. Look how cute he's going to be right there. Um, you know, I'll send I'll send somebody. And then I've got crafter uh, friends in the area that I usually share things with um, to do to do that. A lot of my stuff goes uh, to friends. So, okay. So this is gingham paper and this is from our, make sure we get that straight. There we go. Thank goodness for liquid adhesive. Um, this is from our gingham happy hearts. So this is the newest gingham because I wanted these kind of sky blue, um, ginghams down there because it's going to be like this whole little like um, springy little framed scene going on here. Okay now to put this little guy on 
I'm going to do foam tape and we're going to pop it up. I share my cards with friends. I do too. It's sad when Stanson dies, retire, but I understand. It's you know, um, Lisa and I were just talking about this today and I'm sure, um, I know there's design team members in the chat too, as well. The things that we absolutely love, you know, obviously we're going to keep that we're going to, you know, get, uh, more use out of or whatever. Um, things that we're like, oh, you know, I think I can let that go to a friend or, or whatever we go. And that goes for, that's not just honeybee stuff because let me tell you, um, and I can tell, I can speak for Ricky. I know too, as well. I, I've not, um, I have not seen Brenda's craft room, but I can probably speak for any of our design team members. We don't just collect honeybee stuff. We have stuff from all the craft companies, but we're, we are craft supply hoarders, just like you guys are. So that just goes for anything. So I've got, I've got product and um, stuff from lots of different companies for, from, for years and years. So, oh my gosh, will you guys look at how dang sweet this little bird is? Okay, so I think we're going to need to pop him up too because he's going to be perched up there on the thing. So it's not just honeybee stuff that, you know, I go through and, um, you know, see what I want to keep or anything like that. It's, you know, you go through everything and I'm like, eh, I haven't used that in a while. So I'm going to go ahead and, you know, pass that on to a friend or um, whatever. Some of the stuff I've passed on to like, uh, teachers or Sunday school or whatever. So, and I think I'm going to try to like, he's going to go right in there. Oh my goodness. Look at him. Is he not cute? Kind of stuck down there in our little florals. Okay. And then I've got a sentiment picked out. Oh, happy day. Now this sentiment is from the uh, friendship frame uh, stamp set. And then I think I might, do I want him? I don't know if I want it like down in there or if I want to pop it up over on the side. Let me see if I can't find my tweezers. You guys are getting like a whole little store, crafty time story time this evening. Um, here we go. Um, but yeah, my craft room is a hot mess. And on top of that, we've got uh, Snake Peak starting next week. So I'm getting ready to have a room full of spring. So I got to get my... Um, my hind in and gear here and get this room cleaned up so I can welcome all the spring stuff into here and not have a huge mess. I don't know if you guys are like me, like I can make a mess, but when I start, especially um, start filming for a new release, I gotta, it's gotta be clean or my brain um, can't think like that. So Okay, I've just got that kind of crossed over the center there. Um, okay, I'm going to kind of tilt this so we can look. Look how dang cute. Would this not be sweet for like even a little baby card or something with like a little baby sentiment or this frame for a wedding card? So pretty. So, so pretty. Okay, last thing. Um, yay for snakes. I can't wait for a spring release. Uh, you had a hot day, 88 degrees in Florida. Okay. This is the happy hearts pearls. Now let's see, this may just be like too much, but can we really ever have too much stuff? Okay. And then I'd like to kind of, I want to kind of hold it up here. I know there's the blue. I might stick with the blue just so it's all kind of cohesive. Let's look. And I may just sprinkle just a couple of little blue ones right around here just a little bit. Maybe one tiny one there. 
and there. And plus, not only do we have the release and all of our stuff, but that our challenge group classes this weekend. I just remember that. So I really have to get myself in, in gear here because whew, goodness gracious. Okay. Let me see. I'm going to hold this up. Oh, I kind of like it like that with three little, three little gems or three little pearls just kind of sprinkled around here and there. And then there we go. All right, what do you guys think of mixing the new flower wreath with the little bit older little bird? Okay, let's get it flipped back over here. And then we can even, we can even split it up. We can even split it up. Okay, so you guys tell me, let's see here. It's adorable, love, beautiful, pretty. Thank you. Never too many pearls. Let's say use the pink on the gingham. We could, I could have totally used pink. I'm, tr I was trying to keep it. Usually, I go with um, whatever is bright and pretty, but I didn't. I blended it in this time. Let's say those pearls are my favorite color palette. Yes, the Happy Hearts pearls. Oh, let me do it like this, and you can kind of see there. And while I have you guys here, let's see. I want to. I'm gonna. Okay, what does that do? It says picture in picture. So is my head like down in the corner? You guys tell me. You guys are being my guinea pigs for tonight. Kelly, you look amazing. Thank you, Brenda. I love glitter, foil, and pearls. Me too. Side by side. Oh, it's side by side. Hmm. Still side by side. Hmm. Weird. Okay. Well, there we go. I learned something new. I was hoping that I could do um, picture in picture with um, picture in picture layout press that. I should be able to do that. No, it didn't do it. My screen is side by side. Okay. Okay, I'll quit. I'll quit messing with your eyeballs. I just wanted to try it while we were live so you guys could tell me because I know what I see on the screen, but I didn't know what it is. Uh, okay. All right. Smaller side by side. Okay, just zoomed out. You guys are awesome. Any hints for the spring release? Any hints for the spring release? Lisa, what should we tell them for the spring release? Any hints? Um, if you like my card tonight, you're going to love the spring release. Um, and I know it's pretty springy. Um, what else? Brenda, Ricky, who else is in the chat over there? Uh, Lisa. Okay. Let's see. Lisa's thinking. Uh, what's my, what's your favorites from the new release? We have some awesome, lovely layers um, coming out. Will it have a bunny? Yes, there is a bunny. There, There's some bunnies. If you love the birds, you will love the new spring release. So there you go. If you love the winter birds, you're going to love the spring birds. Let's see. When's the release? The release is March the 15th. A bunny or two? Yes. And there's, you guys are going to like the bunnies. How many lovely layers are being released? Um, one, two, three, maybe? Lisa, is there three? Birds and flowers. Lots of birds and flowers. Hummingbirds. No hummingbirds, but that's a really good idea, Miss Lori. We may have to keep that in our noggin for another time. Um, but if you like, think spring birds... And you guys will hit the nail on the head. Spring birds. It is, Brenda says it is amazing. I got to show you here Brenda's comment. Here's what Brenda, she's on our design team. She said it is amazing, all in caps with all the heart eyes. So there you go. Lee, um, 
Brenda has seen the photographs. Um, chipmunks. No chipmunks, but that's cute too. That would be cute for fall. Um, bluebirds. Uh, any birds that wings will move. Hmm. No. Deb is saying, oh boy. Let's see here. Let's, let's take Brenda away there. Okay. Um, let's see here. The wooden crate. So you guys remember the wooden crate. There are lots of fun things that will go in the wooden crate. Uh, lovely layers. There's birds. Somebody mentioned rabbits. Um, it's very, it's really springy. Let's see here. This is so dang cute. Yes, it's so dang cute. Let's see. I'm really wanting more Christmas stamps. Hint, hint, a gingerbread, please. Kathleen, we'll put that on our, uh, keep it in our noggin list. All right. Cute bears. There, there's a few cute things in the, in the uh, spring release. You guys are going to like it. All right. So let's go ahead. How about wet dogs? That's only your house, Miss Lori. No, I lie. When it rains here, we have wet dogs and wet kitty cats. But um, yes, wet dogs. I hear you. All right, Miss Lisa, if you could give us the winner for this evening. Let's see here. So many things coming. I know you guys are next Tuesday, sneak peek start. Thank you, Miss Erica. I'm just going to wait for Lisa here to get us our winner. Thank you, Kelly. Karen, you're welcome. Excited to craft you tomorrow night. Woohoo! Yes, we have snowy dogs. That's one of the things I hated about living in a snow area when we lived in Washington was uh, the dogs when it would get caked on their paws, the snow. Eesh. All right, Teresa Ross, you are our winner. Teresa, if you'll email me, Kelly, K-E-L-L-E-Y at honeybeestamps.com. I will hook you up with your prize. All right. Good evening, everyone. Thanks for joining me. And I will see you back here on Thursday night. Bye, guys. Have a great Wednesday tomorrow.